tremendous opportunity, tremendous challenge. All the same, you know, this week against the very fine uh, <coughs> University of Central Florida, you know, football team, you know, ranked in the top 25. Um, you know, you see why they they're where they're at. Uh, just watching them play. Um, so again, we're going to have to make sure that uh, our attention to detail and and uh, reaction is, is going to be good uh, as we go down there. Um, we're pretty healthy uh, this week. Expect uh, to have everybody for the game. Don't expect anybody to miss unless something happened uh, during the week here in practice. But uh, <clears throat> expect to have uh, have everybody back. Uh, you know that's playing that didn't uh, finish the game um, last weekend. So, uh, any questions? Randy, do you sell this to your team as just another game, or do you actually let them know this is kind of a step up, kind of a competition for them? I'm, I'm always a type, Joe, that I'm going to be very upfront and honest with our team. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell them something that, I, that isn't factual or isn't true. You know, I'm told them we're, we're going to have to step our game up quite a bit. You know, this week uh, we have the ability to do that. Uh, <clears throat> But I'm, I'm not going to lead them down a path that isn't going to get them to where they want to go. And, you know, with that, sometimes it's a little harsh, you know, it's a little hard. But, uh, you know, if we want to if we want to do the things that we want to do and if they want to accomplish the things that they want to as a team, then you've got to each and every week you have to step up. But again, the challenge this week is even bigger and better. Because again, this is a better, this will be the best team that we've played so far this year. So, you know, that's something that uh, I'm not going to hold back and, you know, tell them something that, like I said, isn't factual. What can you do to get the running game going? Uh, I don't know if the opponents have been tough the last two weeks. Or it's not real hard, Gavin. You know, it's called, it's called uh, doing your job, coming off the ball playing with good fundamentals and technique and having more of a will and want to than the guy across from you. And then backs got to read their keys and make the proper cuts. But running the football, to me, that's all will and want to and fundamentals and technique. It's you, you're double teaming to a linebacker, or you're single blocking. And, you know, if we can block the one-on-ones or the two-on-ones and you know, coming off and, you know, we're getting some push there later in the game on the one side. You know, those are the things. And really, to me, every, it's, it's like life. Everything's want to. How much want to do you have to go out there and to be the best you can be in each and every play? Okay? Some plays it might not work out. But then you come back and don't worry about that play. Go to the next one. And you just keep, keep doing it. That, that, to me, is how you get it going. You know, we're not going to sit here and the, the devise any, you know, super natural plays that they haven't seen or anything along those lines. It just comes down to, you know, blocking and driving people off the ball and backs making the, the right reads. On that, have you seen a different mentality from that group, the offensive lines in practice this week? Um, you know, again, they, there's... There's guys that have played well in spots, but were not consistent enough. You know, last week Rob Holmes gave us a little bit more push. You know, on that side, when you watch the tape, you see, you see, you don't see people at the line of scrimmage. You actually saw a guy, you know, when him and Vandermark doubled, you saw a guy two to three yards off the ball. Well, now it's a lot easier to run the ball and get up in there and press the blocks and make your cuts. You know, as a running back. You know, there's not a lot of great running backs, even the great ones. You know, they got to get some push. You know they're not going to be able to they're not going to be able to get it all done you know all by themselves you know that, that'll help but um, you know that's the thing that you know we just have to continue to work on and uh, you know continue to get better especially you know when you're going against teams that you know are a little bit bigger than you are I mean and again when you when you take a look I mean yeah the offensive line yeah Nino's got to step it up he's been around. Matt's got to step it up. He's been around. You know, we made a change there, and, and Mandy's just got to continue to grow. And uh, Christian, you know, he's not a freshman anymore. He's played three games. He's been his original freshman. 
you know, Rob Holmes. So, you know, now it's, hey, everybody's new, that's everybody's been here, whether it's a freshman who just started playing this year, we had three games on the road. We played at home, we played on the road. So now you know what the expectations are when you have to go on the road and play. And, you know, so nobody's young anymore. You know, you can't, you're not, you don't want to continue. Where it's the truth, but you're out there playing. So you, you can't, you can't have a crutch. You can't have an excuse. You just got to go out and play to the best of your ability, you know, each and every play. And nobody's ever played a perfect game. I don't ask anybody to, to say that they're going to play a perfect game. But just go out there, you know, and give it all you have. And it's like anything else. Sometimes you don't make the big, big sale in life, in sales, if you're in sales or whatever profession you're in. Sometimes that happens. So you learn from it. You go back and you say, okay, I got to do this differently. I got to make this adjustment. That's all football is. Brandon, what dimension does Dylan Gabriel give them a quarterback that maybe they didn't have? Um, I, I was in, I'm very impressed with him as a true freshman. You know, you can see he's been well coached coming out of high school. Um, and, uh, you know, makes good decisions, good athlete, throws the deep ball very, very well. You know, being a left-hander, I mean, that ball looks like it's just floating right down from a cloud, you know, to those guys when you're really studying and watching. He's very accurate on the deep ball, you know, and, um, but just his whole um, makeup that you watch and you see how he handles everything, you know, he's very, very impressive. He's got a good grasp of what they're doing. Kevon Jones has made some big plays so far. How have you, what have you thought of his transition to the new position and what does he still have to improve on? Uh, you know, KK, you know, I love the kid to death and I'm just trying to, to find the best way to, to reach him and continue to motivate him because I think that he's, um, he's got tremendous upside. And uh, I think he's shown that, you know, and you guys have been around for a while, I've heard me say, but, you know, he's one of those guys, boy, you give him the sugar, he gets fat, you know. And so it's hard to, you got to give him some sugar once in a while, but you got to, you know, you got to give him some carrots once in a while, too, you know. And you got to give him a kick in the, the rear uh, to keep him grounded. And, uh, but I, I think he's making progress. And uh, I think he can, if he wants to really work at it and really be good, he could be one of the better ones we've had around here, you know, if he really wants it bad enough. And you see those signs, but it's got to be that consistency stuff. And, and what he has to do, he has to listen to the right people. And if he does that, then, but he's, he's made, making that transition, he's done a lot of good things. And he loves, and he likes the game. He likes to play. You know, that's one thing. He likes to play. And now we, we got to help him refine all that. We got to help him do those other things to take him from this level to this level to that level. Can you coach want to? Is that if the guy doesn't want it, Joe, it's hard. Right. It's hard. It's hard. You know, I'll, you'll, you'll die trying as a coach, you know. But man, it's, you talk about training. If the guy doesn't want to, man, I don't want him on my team. It's too hard. It's too hard. You know, I mean, you, to me, you shouldn't be here if you don't want it. You know, football is a hard game. It's a very hard game. It's physical. You know, you're out there today at 95 degree heat inside because of what we're trying to get assimilated to before we go down there. You know, it's hard. And if you don't have the want to, boy, don't don't waste my time or don't waste your teammates' time. Don't some of these kids think they have the want to and they don't really know what the want to is? Some of them, but you know, that's where I think, Joe, what happens is you can eliminate a lot of that through the recruiting process so you don't make that mistake. You know, I think that's I think that's probably one of the biggest things. You gotta you gotta find that out during the recruiting process. And if you can find out by watching tape, or watching practice talking to a lot of different people at that school to find out if that person has that makeup. You know, I learned long ago, and I, you guys heard me tell you this story, Bobby Regal, I, I don't even know if he's still, still alive, but he was a scout for the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, when I was at Syracuse, we had a player there, I won't mention his name, and uh, I made a comment to him 
you know, but once he leaves us and goes to the next level, he'll be okay. And I was a, I was a young guy, you know, at that time. Um, still a young guy, but I don't know. But he said, Randy, let me tell you something. He says, you know, you're just growing in this business. He said, if he ain't doing it for you, he ain't all good and sudden switch a sudden flip the switch and do it for us. You know, and same thing, the kid hasn't really demonstrated that in high school, or if you haven't seen at least the ability to do that. Because when you get here, it's a lot harder. You know, so, you know, that's where you try to do a good job of recruiting. And I think that's, I think that's one of the things that we did here before, and we're working to do again. Finding those kids that are the overachievers, signing those kids that have that want to, that might not be those heavily recruited kids. Because some of these heavily recruited kids, they they have the me, 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 they don't have the want to. You know, all of a sudden they've gotten everything, they don't want it anymore. You know, they think they're enabled and entitled. And that's what you're trying to stay away from from a recruiting process so you don't you don't make those those kind of mistakes. But then what happens is when you have a lot of guys that have that want to within your program, they'll either have those guys that might be on the fence or a little bit, either they'll raise it or they'll take care of it and tell them, you know, maybe you shouldn't be here. UCF running essentially the same offense as with Mackenzie Milton? Yeah. Maybe deep a little bit more? Pop deep a little bit more? Uh, they're taking advantage of what they think is their best for their personnel. Looking from the outside, how have they been able to, to get good pass? Things like four years ago or five years ago, they were winless. Some of that is, you know, the student body is big, maybe location games, but how have they been able to, from the outside? Look, look at the state where they're from. Look at the recruits. Size, speed, and athleticism, the state of Florida. How many Division I players we have up here in Connecticut and Northeast? I mean, they, they, got, they got more than that. They got three times that right there in Orlando. You know, I mean, take a look at their roster. They don't pretty much go out of the state of Florida. It makes a difference. And they're right there in the middle of the state. So you can draw from Jacksonville. You can draw from Tallahassee, Tampa, you know, West Palm, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, you know, over in uh, Naples, in those areas. So, I mean, that's one of the things. I mean. They've been, they've been able to, and then they do a good job. But they they have a lot of talent. They have a lot of talent. Brady, with the ability now to redshirt kids after they play four games, what's that process like for, for you and where your program's at? And how do you balance the pros and cons of playing, letting a kid immediately get as much experience as possible versus bringing back to that extra year? Yeah. Intact? Well, you know, I have, a, I have a plan in my mind with each kid, each freshman, what we're trying to do with them. Um, and there could be some guys that we play, you know, in four games this year, or at least get try to get them in so they get that experience, but um, not have them uh, use a year of eligibility unless there would be an injury. You know, we got, you know, we got two young tackles up front, uh, right? Reante and uh, uh, Chase, and um, again, you think they have ability. So, and Andrews, Torres Silva, you know, probably have him where he can have an ability to maybe get in in four games, but then Chase will practice, and if we get a chance, you know, the same thing with uh, Reante. You know, uh, Jordan Morrison is a guy who played on special teams. You know, Jordan Morrison might be a guy we continue to play on special teams. But, you know, DJ got a little bit Nick uh, last week, but we think he's going to be okay. So George, Jordan's going to play on special teams. He might get an opportunity to play linebacker, but he's going to be a guy that's going to be on the field for you next year. So you want to at least get him the experience, but now do you use four games or do you use the year? You know, and those are the things that you, you try to do. but. In doing so, you're never losing sight of the fact that you're trying to win games. And that's the bottom line, because I'm not going to jeopardize the hard work of other guys just to say, hey, okay, we're getting ready for, you know, whatever. You know, we got to try, we got to do what we got to do.
to win the games. And that's what we're trying to do. And some of it might mean that we play some guys in only four, and, or might not even play them in four. We might just practice on the second team, but never get in. And then there might be guys that, uh, because of injury, that you know maybe we didn't think we would want to use up a year of eligibility. We're going to have to. So, uh, you know, the thing that's bad, though, I mean, and again, this is all personal preference, and I'm not, you know, talking negatively about anybody, but you know, you see now where somebody's season isn't going so good, and their starting quarterback says, hey, I'm done playing this year. And I'm sure that's a conversation the head coach and the quarterback had to think that, you know, we'll be better next year. But, you know, now you're almost saying that, okay, we're taking this year to develop us for next year because, you know, they did have a coaching change. But that's the one thing that you see. And then you saw last year where a quarterback got beat out and they went with a younger guy and he wasn't going to play and he left and he went in the portal. So there, there's, there's a lot more on a head coach's plate nowadays than there was when I first got started in this business, and I'm not so sure it's all good. You know, I think it's, I think it's, it, it might be good for the player, but, uh, or people think it's good for the player, but sometimes, um, um, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's decisions that are above, above my pay scale and even above anybody listening to what I got to say, so. In general, though, is that why do you have a follow-up? I, <laughs> I just love talking to you. I was off last week. Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah. Where did you go? DC. Huh? Went down to DC. Oh, not to eat. <laughs> Fight that stuff down there? You know, no. I'll, I'll play. I'll play down there. Oh, uh, so you have a girl down there now. So you want to talk about that? Girl down there. I'm just kidding. I know. Um, it, it's got to be complicated to, to try and consider what's best for a kid, what's best for the team, what's best for the program. Whereas like a, a true freshman who you might think is the best option to play every week this year, you, I'm sure you're also battling, well, man, he'd be really good as a fifth year yep. senior. That's the that, one. That is, that is hard. You know, it is hard. And, uh, you know, and you just try, you know, what you try to do is you just try to make the decisions that you feel are best for your program and best for the young man. And, and trying to help the program win and not trying to take advantage of a young man if you, if you don't have to. You know, and then you sit down with them and you tell them, hey, here's what the thought process is, here's what we're thinking to do. But, you know, what compounds that is the fact is if you do get injuries. If you get injuries, then, but the one, and that's why I do like the rule, because if you get an injury, you can plug a guy in for a couple games, but not lose a full year. I do. I mean, I do like that. I do like the rule. I do like the rule for the freshman that you can, that you can do that. You know, um, but uh, because, like I said, because you do get you do get some injuries that tell you that you're going to have to play somebody maybe for you know a week or two. But you know, you take a look at your you look, you look at your depth and you you evaluate the personnel. And in some positions, you say, okay, well, I got to play this guy all year long. At least, as, you know, having as a backup, whether he gets into a game offensively or defensively as a backup, well, he can play on special teams, so he's going to gain experience playing. If he's a 4 4 special teams guy, you know, he might get 20 snaps a game. So now you're going to be better off for next year if he becomes a player for you on defense or on offense, whatever. You know, and, that, and that's the. You know, that's the thing where you got to have guys that are bought into, like last week. I mean, we played, we played 55 guys last weekend, which is quite a bit for a game that, you know, you weren't way ahead or something along those lines. And, um, but, you know, that's why it's important because, you know, the second team doesn't get as many reps during the week as the first team guys do. So they got to be prepared and they got to be ready to go. And they got to they got to understand that, you know. And then there's like defensive line; those get those eight guys know they're going to roll in there, you know. And so we might go instead of a six and three rotation, we go five and four with those guys in practice because we know those guys are going to are play. But you know, in the offensive line, it's hard to rotate guys in because of all the different communication stuff that takes place. You usually don't don't see that. How, how much deeper are you, are, are you as a team than last year? How hard is it to build depth in a program? 
I think we're a lot deeper than we have been. You know, a lot of it's young, though. I mean, that's that's the thing that you you look at. And I think I said it on the call on Sunday. I mean, on defense one time, I mean, we had uh, there was two juniors out there, Tyler Coyle and uh, Dylan Harris. But Dylan's really a freshman, you know, because he hasn't. You know, this is he's only played three games for us, and everybody else was a freshman, redshirt freshman or sophomore, which is good. And then the same thing, you know, with with on offense it, it sometimes, where we didn't have certain guys out there. So, you know, building depth is something you're always trying to do. We have more than we have more now. We're building that up now. And, and you know, I think, you know, after this year, we should be in in really good shape. You know, from a roster management standpoint, after we add this class this year, then I think it's going to be a little bit easier. You're not going to have the disparity, I don't think, in terms of the classes. You should be able to have, you know, 14, 15, 16 seniors a year and have guys that are 50 or seniors. Because that's what's really going to, you know, make our program, you know, as long as, you know, they get good and then they don't, you know, you gotta hold the graduation date back off. <laughs> Is this a series that you'd like to maybe see continue? What about playing other league teams? I know you have some people on schedule that don't control it. Would you like to play some or many of the teams in the league? So yeah, we've had discussions with uh, UCF. I think we, you know, not to get ahead of myself because I'm not, I'm only concerned about this year. But I think I know we've had. Uh, there's been some discussions, and there are some teams that from the AAC that you, you, you still want to play because it makes sense for what we want to do from a recruiting standpoint. How do you expect Jack to bounce back this week? Uh, I think he'll be better. You know, I think, you know, I, I probably didn't do a good enough job of trying to prepare him as much as I could for, you know, going there and doing the things, you know, being on the road for the first time and just talking to him and keeping him settled down. But, because I think he got flustered right almost in that, after we got the first down when he, that guy came and got hit, I think that kind of shook him up a little bit. And, you know, I tried to talk to him nice when he came off, and then I kind of didn't talk to him nice uh, when he came off then another time. So, you know, I got, when I called Dan Orlowski, I said, hey, do me a favor, call Jack and tell him what it's like to be a freshman playing quarterback. And, uh, uh, give him some insight, and I talked to Jack about it, and I think that'll that'll help him. He'll be fine. He's a competitor, you know. And again, you got to remember, he's just a true freshman, you know, that came in here in uh, June, May, you know, and started, you know, his college career. So, you know, I've been used to that with a, a guy before, and uh, you know, you got to be careful because you don't want to to give the kid too much too soon, and you don't want to overload him to make it really hard on him with all the other things that he has to do uh, on the football field. So, you know, we can do, but we can do, we can do, and I can do a better job of making sure that we help him as much as we can. But I'm not, I'm not worried about him. He's a competitor, and he, he has, he has to want to. You know, he has to want to. Everybody good? All right, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.